www.herdmystic.com. Leave your ego at the door. And kind of incorporate some person in that, so just make it relatable. But if you don't mind. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think that I'm giving my perspective as a person who's part of the conscious community. And yes. the conscious community has some struggles. Um, mm-hmm. And we struggle in the terms of economics. So that's the, I guess that would be the, the audience that I'm kind of catering to my commentary on. So yes. in terms of the conscious community in general, we have a cosmology. And in that cosmology, part of our belief in general is to be progressive, to be self-sustaining, to be family-oriented, to be community-oriented, to honor the ancestors, to live the most natural and best life that we can because we are life-giving people. And the reality is that we are struggling because we are black in America, and as, you know, W.E.B. Du Bois talked about all the time, is this double consciousness. So on one side, I'm American. On another side, I am black, and the two really are like oil and water. And our okay. job is African Americans and people born in this country. Whether you call yourself an American or not, you're here, you know. Mm-hmm. And you have to deal with the economic realities of this country and this society. So whether you like it or not, it's not a barter system. We can create that. <laughs> we don't have a barter system. We don't have that, okay. though. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, and especially for the conscious community, I'm always like, you know, we have this tendency to always think, oh, you know, money is evil, and I don't want money, and I don't want to talk about prosperity, but that that, that uh, organic kale, you know, mm-hmm. that we want to eat, mm-hmm. and them pecans, the raw, mm-hmm. natural, non-GMO pecans, yeah, th- those cost. That cost money. Mm-hmm. And Mm -hmm. so even just maintaining a healthy lifestyle, it's not always about materialism. So I think the first thing Mm -hmm. in the conscious community, we have to dispel the myth that money is evil and we don't want it and poverty is what we're looking for. It's not. We are Mm life-giving people. So I feel like we have to adjust our idea and our relationship with money. And we are people who Mm -hmm. are sold. Understand? We couldn't separate ourselves economically. We never have been able to separate ourselves. And so what we have to do is kind of adjust our attitude towards money. Why do I want money? What is money going to bring to me in terms of my quality of life? It's not money for itself. It's money in terms of children, taking care of children, making sure you have the best health, you know? Yeah, Mm -hmm. making sure you have Mm -hmm. the best health. Queens want to look beautiful. They want to take care of themselves. They want to look good for their husband, you know? Um, That costs Mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Self-maintenance costs money. Transportation costs money. I mean, everything that you want to do, business is Mm -hmm. all about money at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But what is the money affording me? Money money is affording me freedom, freedom to actually have the space to homeschool, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Freedom um, to travel to the motherland. That costs money. Delta ain't taking no barter. (laughs) You know, the airways ain't taking no barter. You want to go to the motherland, you need some money. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's fine. we have to have money. Let's, let's, let's keep it real. And so the conscious community, I think yeah. the first thing we have to do is adjust our relationship and our attitude towards money. I don't want money for money's sake. I want money because it affords me a quality of life that brings out the best in who I am. I can eat better when I have my money right. I can travel freely. Sure. I can spend my time with my family. You know, sure. I can own myself. I can own my house. I don't have somebody mm. telling me they're going up on the rent every, you know, six months, and they're going to put me out. Right. You know, so I think that's the first yeah. thing. We have to adjust our attitude towards money. We have to be focused on the positive aspects of what money can do for us. So mm-hmm. once we do that, I think there's a level okay. of education. You know, we have to educate our children and we have to educate each other um, right. because the, the children learn from us. And so 
if we're not handling money right and they see us struggling, what are they going to do generationally? And that's the problem. Hey, we have in hey, hey, you ain't never <laughs> lied about that. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, yeah, we, we we have this generational <laughs> curse of poverty, you know what I mean, this generational curse of poverty. And so my thing is be the hustler. Don't let the, don't let the hustle hustle you. So, like, to all my black folks that, you know, getting food stamps and stuff, I've always said I am not concerned when Trump and all the rest of them start talking about they're going to cut food stamps. You ain't going to hurt nobody black because, trust me, we never needed your food stamp. We got hustle. And that's what mm-hmm. we got to realize. Mm-hmm. We got to turn mm-hmm. our hustle we got to turn our hustle into to money, turn it into mm-hmm. business mm-hmm. and legitimate businesses, you know. Thanks. And even me, I've been hustling for 15 years. I had a mm-hmm. sister that taught me, and I can make money out of nothing. I mean, out of mm-hmm. clear air. And I literally, I literally had her, um, hold on one second. I literally mm-hmm. had her tell me one day, here you go. I literally had her tell me one day when I first started working for her, she said, here goes some yarn and here goes some shells, make something. I looked at her like mm. she was crazy. Mm-hmm. But I have watched this sister take some African fabric scraps, get some milk cartons, cut the milk cartons in circles, take some cowrie shells and some glue gun, and put the fabric on there and go to Michael's and get some earring hooks and turn each of those items into a pair of earrings and sell them for $15. Right. So the hustle is always in us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have always, I mean, everybody has that. When you think about it, the everybody got a cousin. He cut hair in the garage or the backyard yep. or in the back yep. room. You know, yep. there's a sister that does braids and hair on the side. We always got hustle. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got somebody yep. who does pressure washing. But yep. we have to decide at some point. Are we willing to play the financial game of doing business according to, as they say, Babylon? Because a lot of us keep our money off the off the books for good reason. Mm-hmm. But you do get to a point where you say, do I want to play the game or I don't want to play the game? And this is a little secret. People right. file the information with the, you know, SBA. They get business license. Yes. They do the secretary of state. They do all of that. And the reason uh-huh. why is because they go into it knowing the end game. Okay. They go into it. White okay. folks typically know the end game. The end game is real simple. It's tax planning. So we got to start thinking okay. strategically. This is a game of chess. Yeah. So my yeah. goal is to make as much money as I can and pay as little tax as I can. That's why that asshole Trump got his ass up there on the microphone and going to tell the whole world, I don't pay taxes, I'm smart. <laughs> he let the cat I'll out check. the bag. Who don't know? Who didn't yeah. know that? But see, my mother's yeah. an accountant, so I know that a long time ago. People my mother's who, an accountant as well. And see, there you go. So you know how they do. <laughs> they transfer <laughs> uh, assets and stuff. Yep. <laughs> they get yep. divorced and get married as necessary. Yep. <laughs> you know? yeah, as much as possible. Yeah. All types of things. Everything yeah, somebody else's name. Yeah, and you take vacations and, and you, <laughs> that's, see, that's what I'm talking about, transfer assets. And then not only that, mm-hmm. they play, it's a, it's a game of chess. And so you have to become educated on the game of chess. Black folks, you say, oh, you know, I ain't going to tell them what I got. I ain't going to tell them what I make. Yeah. White man ain't finna get no yeah. money. He don't get no money yeah. anyway. Yeah. If you don't let him, you have to plan your taxes. So I go back to. Yeah. First of all, we have to change our attitude about money. Second of all, we have to decide, are we going to play the game? And if we're going to play the game, are we going to get ourselves educated enough to win? Hmm. And so the education part is the essential part. What do I need to do? How do I need to go about this? What, how do, you, do, you tell the government how much you want to pay taxes. They don't tell you that. See, black folks, we think yeah, that we yeah, go to work and yeah, somebody just yeah. tell us what to, what to give them. And we ain't got no yeah, choice. They take it out of our state. That ain't how taxes really work. That's the poor that man's That ain't tax. how it works. Yeah, no, that it's ain't not. How it works. You tell the government how much you make and how much you want them to take out. They tell you your tax yeah. liability, but your job is to figure out how to make that number real low so you don't owe them anything. Yeah, you yeah. break even and you still live in the life you want. This makes a lot of um, sense because even when you fill out a job application, they'll give you the federal tax withholding and they'll be like, all right, how many how many dependents you got? 
how many allowances you want. Right. And you fill that out yourself. <laughs> and, yeah. and they don't say, you oh, this is wrong. You tell them how much to take out of your check. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's deep. <laughs> right. And so the same That's thing with easy. business. Business is the same thing. So, uh, and I'm going to just say, uh, let me see. Okay. It, it, how do I put it? What you do in, in business is you plan on how much you are going to make in terms of how much you're going to document. Uh-huh. Quarterly, you go ahead and you create your, you know, your, your spreadsheet, your QuickBooks, your work. You work it out, and you let your business get to that number, which is what you project. So your, bal- your book mm-hmm. balances out in, out in the end. And you pay taxes according to the tax code based on what you projected that you were going to make. And when the end of the quarter comes, you pay those taxes. And of course, business fluctuates. It goes up and it goes down. So everything can balance out if you if you play your cards right. So I say all that to say that we don't need to say to ourselves, "I ain't gonna tell them this," and "I ain't gonna do that," because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. the, when you want to grow, you need credit, right? Fact. You want to buy land. Yeah. You want to expand your business. You want real estate. You want to yeah. own your own business, like literally the brick and mortar, so nobody can raise the rent. Um, right. and, the, and, and the leases and all that stuff. But, I mean, this is a serious game out here because when you look at commercial real estate, it is, yes, there are Jews and white folks who own the whole block. They buy up every building. Mm-hmm. They hold, They literally own blocks. Brother Jay-Z mm-hmm. was talking about in, uh, that, what is that, that, that song, OJ, the story of OJ? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the OJ story <laughs> where it's like talking about credit and how he would have bought a building. And that was 25 years ago. Now it's worth 25 million or something to that effect. Like, exactly. yeah, so, yeah. I mean, this is an interesting piece, but you know, for our people, we may feel like, okay, I'm just this little guy, and what you're talking about, May Muna, is like way advanced from where I could even grasp. How could I get? And and you really touched on some interesting points about education and all of the things that you need to do. Is this something that you were born with or is this something that you developed over time? And what point did you kind of kind of put it together? Because you said you've been hustling for fifteen for the last fifteen years. So what was the crux to kind of motivate you to keep raising the level up and raising the bar? Is it simply education or is it is there more to it? You know, to be honest with you, I got tired of being exploited. I got tired of being exploited. I realized I was being exploited at a young age. I uh, I, worked at, I worked in an underground Atlanta, which is a very popular tourist site. And so mm-hmm. I had, this is just my little short, brief story of how I got hip to how money and labor work. And I'm also a socialist, which is really um, awkward for me to be so gung-ho. I'm not a free capitalist. I'm a, I'm a socialist. But um, I started seeing some economic realities. And so I worked for an African um, black-owned company that was very doing very well in the underground Atlanta tourist site. And so what happened is I got a job with them because I've always been into black economics, working for black people, you know, and, mm-hmm. and making my own side hustles, doing black business. So that's always been my thing. Mm-hmm. And so in college, right. I went to work for this, this small company, and they have what you call a kiosk, I guess, or a cart. And so I was working the cart, and I was just amazed at how much money, like I would tally the money up. I'm like, these mm-hmm. folks made $1,000 off of some stupid keychains and a couple of African this, that, 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 silly stuff. Mm-hmm. 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 And I'm watching how the tourists just come and just throw money out, just, just spending, spending, $40, $100. And I'm like, wow, okay, so this is how business works. And then I'm sitting my black mm-hmm. ass up there making $6 an hour. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, six times <laughs> six hours I'm standing here. So I made thirty six dollars, mm-hmm. and they making four hundred, eight hundred, a thousand. But no matter what, I make thirty six dollars. No matter what, no matter how mm-hmm. much I smile or anything, I do. No, I yeah, just make yeah. $36. No matter how good you do. Mm. Right. They don't know incentives. Mm-hmm. They just pay me enough so I come back tomorrow. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. So I took note mm-hmm. of that, mm-hmm. and I said to myself, if they Ooh, can sell this, because I'm the one selling their shit. What's that? You said they paid you enough so you could come back tomorrow, like. Yeah. <laughs> they paid you just enough yeah. so you could just, man, <laughs> I'm sorry, but go ahead. Yeah, it paid me just enough so I come back tomorrow. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's, that's some deep stuff. It really is deep. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that happened to me is I said, I'm the one over here selling this stuff. I'm the one being friendly, and I'm the one doing all the work. 
So what if I do this for myself? And I thought about it. I said, what can I sell? What can I sell? And they had those those shea butter hard, you know, funky Mm -hmm. from Africa, nothing special about it. So I bought their shea butter. Turn around, bought me some wholesale mm-hmm. containers, and I went home and I did some research because the internet wasn't that popular. Then I don't know how I did it, but I pretty much took some of their essential oils, which I bought from them at a discounted rate, and their shea butter. I mixed it up with some olive oil and stuff, and I put my little labels on it, and uh-huh. I went off onto the street before I went to uh-huh. work. What I was doing is making money for myself. So I had this big mm-hmm. old basket I got from the Goodwill, a big square, big huge basket, and I was standing on the corner on Peachtree. With my shea butters on the left and my sea, my bath salts on the right. And so what I did is I got some Family Dollar Epsom salt, some food coloring, and, again, essential oils, and mixed them up and put them in a little bag. Mm-hmm. And I would literally stand there, and within, what, maybe 15 minutes to 45 minutes, and I would make $100 before I went to them and made $36 for the whole day. Right. And I would do that every single day. So I'm walking away every day. I first go around, what, I guess about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, or 3 o'clock. I stand out there on Peace Tree, make all my money, Mm -hmm. sell out. Mm -hmm. I go Mm -hmm. to them, make my $36. So I made the trip Uh downtown worth my while. So I'm walking away with $136, but they're the only ones that gave me $36. I got $100 off the street. So that tripled my income. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so after a while, of course, you know, I'm like, why am I even coming down here to them? Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. And, you know, jobs have a good purpose because when you want to get a car or you want to get this and that, they'll give you anything. You got a job. Right. Now you got to right. hustle. They can't, you know, they can't do nothing for you. So sometimes they can't verify. We it. also, that's right. They can't verify. They want two pay stubs. Maybe three. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sometimes we have to navigate, like, once again, double consciousness. I got to be me, but I also got to deal with this system. So we have mm-hmm. learned also, you know, it's just like the language. We have to talk the way black folks talk around each other so we understand each other. But we also got to speak the king's English. So we're living with two worlds that we got to balance. So on one level, I mm-hmm. might need to keep that part-time job. Or I might need to keep them yeah. benefits for health insurance. But on another level, mm-hmm. I still need to have my hustle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so right. that's one of the things that we have to decide. How much of this system do we want to, you know, sell ourselves to? Because literally, that's what you're doing. Every right. heartbeat, it has a, it has a dollar amount to it. You know what I mean? I'm standing yeah, yeah. here giving you my heartbeats and giving you my breath for thirty six dollars. Man, man, you know. And so at some point, you got to say, what is my value? If I got to sell myself, am I going to sell myself for thirty six dollars? Or am I going to sell myself for $136,000 a year? What am I going to do? Right. Really or am I going establishing to work your value. What's that? I said really establishing your value within self and then having that and trying to build on that, trying to build your self value as opposed to assimilating wholeheartedly to a culture that, for one, don't really give a shit about you. And for two, it's only going to give you enough to keep coming back. <laughs> that is Absolutely. So Absolutely. So, so the question goes to, am I going to do for self? And you might have to have a hybrid. I mean, hell, we African-Americans, we ain't nothing but a mm-hmm. hybrid. That's all we know is being a hybrid. That's you a know, fact. we know mm-hmm. how to be half mm-hmm. and half, part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we part-time this yeah. and part-time that. We know how to do that. We do that naturally with our language, with our culture, with everything we do. We're, all, we're, we're nothing but a walking hybrid. A combination of lots of things. So this is natural to us. We can do it. We can. You know? Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. And we can say to ourselves, okay, I'm doing this hustle to get my money right, do this and that. But at some point, do I actually want to play the game? I mean, you got people who who, who decide they never want to play the game. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know? But there may be some limitations to that as well. Yeah. Don't cry about it because you made that choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yep. how does your how does your husband factor into your overall business sense? Is it something that causes conflict or do you guys work harmoniously in the business thing? Like in choosing a husband and choosing a mate, was this something that you factored in? 
Oh, yeah. And, yes, absolutely. I would say to specifically to folks who are single and who have not chosen anybody yet, choose well. Mm-hmm. Choose well, choose uh, well. As Lauren Hill said, choose well, choose well, choose well. Be picky I as should. hell because because when, when you get somebody, I mean, for the most part, let's just keep it real, you're kind of stuck. You're stuck with what you got. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or at least it should be if it's about commitment. Um, oh, yeah. But we get back to some fundamentals about black love. What is black love? What is What are black relationships? What is marriage? What is family? What is it based on? What is the real goal? And so the most fundamental question is, I'm a female and you're a male. Why are we together? What are we trying to accomplish here? Ooh. Are we on the same page? Do we want the same thing? Or am I, and this is a conflict that you can have easily, are, are you as hungry and thirsty and ready to work as I am? Mm-hmm. Are you? Or you just want to spend it? You want to waste it? So mm-hmm. one of the things mm-hmm. I, I could say is in addition to having the same purpose and the same values and work ethic, is you also have to have the same end goal. And when I say the same end goal, um, an economic outlook, is this generational wealth or are we going to spend it all just between us? That's big. Right. That's big. Right. Because I'm going to operate is. differently if I'm saving this for my daughter. If I'm building for my daughter and my sons and whoever, I'm going to spend money differently. So if you got one person trying to save and be cheap and stuff for generational wealth, and you got another person like, hey, we can ball out. We can throw this away. We can do – it's going to yeah, be yeah. conflict. It's just going to be conflict. Yeah. yeah. So I would say, um, like, for me and my husband, we are, we, we, we are like, one and the same in terms of mission. We both believe oh, in generational sure. wealth. We both come from middle-class backgrounds, and we have mm-hmm. a middle-class mentality. Nobody's responsible mm-hmm. for our success but us. And we can right. determine the sky's the limit. There is no limit, you know. And you yeah. have to have somebody who believes in themselves. They got low self-esteem and they ain't never had nothing. That nigga mentality is the worst kind of person you want to end up with, for real. Always. Yeah, because they want to <laughs> floss it and spend it and show it off and they want to yeah. lend it off to family. We have money, yeah. but guess who ain't getting on family? You're not getting on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I make it and I sacrifice don't mean that you're going to appreciate and respect my money the way I would, no. you know. And that's one no. of the things that we have conflict with is extended family. Extended family see you doing well. Oh, you stuck up. Oh, you acting funny. Yeah. You can't let your mother-in-law or your father-in-law. This is the, I've seen, I have a cousin that got divorced over this, you know. Mm-hmm. He had family members that was always needing something. And the wife is like, wait a minute. What about us? Mm-hmm. What about our daughters? What about our kids? What about and every time you turn, man, that's my mama. Man, that's my family. You got to look out for stuff like that. That's why it's so important for us to look at, do we have similar backgrounds, which is why I believe personally in arranged marriages. Mm. Marriages sense. need to be based on commonality. We go mm-hmm. out here, you know, you, you got this brother who went to Morehouse and he came from a, you know, upper middle class black family and he met Keisha over here, and she just yeah. does something for him. She's sexy, mm-hmm. and she doesn't have a girlfriend. is ghetto. All girlfriends mm-hmm. thinking about is her hair and her weave and how she can show off and floss, and she's just looking forward to the day that he's going to make sure she drive a Mercedes. Keisha right. can't bring no skills to the table. Right. Now, he might be able to take care of Keisha and make Keisha happy, but Keisha can't fulfill all of his greatest potential. She's holding him Ooh. back. Because if he had a bad sister beside him, who knows what he could do, what he could accomplish. Mm. Man. So being unequally yoked, it, it can be a problem. Yeah, being unequally yoked can be a serious, serious problem. And you're going to feel it. If you end up unequally yoked, that person is going to piss you off. You're going to get tired of spinning your wheel. And every time you turn around, you feel like they're not pedaling as fast, as fast and as hard as you are. You giving and they not giving. You planning and they not planning. And that's mm-hmm. just the part about mm-hmm. not helping. But what about the part of hurting? Mm-hmm. You know? And, mm-hmm. and I, okay, in terms of conflict, I've had, I have, and to speak on my own situation, I have had conflict with my husband. And mm-hmm. some of the conflicts that can happen in business can happen because pride. Men have pride. Okay? Yeah. I have to 
find that balance with my own husband. Business requires you to communicate. When you're doing a family business, you have to communicate. But there comes a time when some men feel like I have a situation and I don't want you to see I may have messed up. And my pride don't want to let me put that on the plate for us to dissect. So I'm going to keep this to right. myself. Right. And that's pride. And I get that. I understand men sometimes they don't want everything laid out, especially if they mess up and they just want to let me handle it, let me hold it. She don't need to know. I had a situation recently and uh-huh. I really struggled with it. I, I really, really uh-huh. struggled with it. My husband, um, we have a, a multiple properties. And my husband uh, decided to take the rent from the tenant for about four months and keep it and invest it mm-hmm. in something, which I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we don't open each other's mail. And so I end up on accident just talking and running my mouth, and I open this mail, Citibank, which is one of the, the mortgages. And it said something mm-hmm. about a default. I said, what? Who? What? And I started reading because I don't ever open his mail. Because we have, you know, mm-hmm. his, his houses and his properties in his name and mine is in my name, you know. And that's why we got together. Mm-hmm. We got together for economic purposes. We ain't in love. We never were. <laughs> we got together because he's successful and I'm successful. And it made sense. <laughs> we still I'm ain't sure. in love. I love him to death. But we ain't in love. Yeah. Yeah. I this is it. a duty-bound relationship. And I want to speak on that in a minute, too. Because we yeah, got to have yeah. some adjustments about this whole in love. That's some... Bragging that bull, if you ask me. But, <laughs> Talk but about anyway, the, 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 end of the, the end of the story is that I found out, you know, they said it was done in the dark, come to the light. It is so real. And right. I was just shocked. And I said, well, how did this happen? Why, why didn't you talk to me about it? And, and you know, the, the business relationship we have requires us to communicate clearly about finances and decisions. I wasn't consulted mm-hmm. about this. I wasn't given any choices or say so about whether or not the money is supposed to go straight to the mortgage when the tenant pays the money. I got mm-hmm. left out of a whole bunch of stuff. So that's how business relationships can conflict with marriage. On mm-hmm. the marriage level, I'm mad, but I'm really mad on the business level because I'm a business mm-hmm. partner. I'm mm-hmm. invested too, and you mess with my money and my circumstances. Right. You right. know, because um, that just took your credit level down. And so the next property we're going to go for, when was you going to talk to me about that? So there is that mm-hmm. special place where you really have to make sure that you have a bridge between the business relationship and agreements, and they have to be compatible with the marriage relationship and, and dynamics. Because when those two right. come in conflict, you got a double problem. hmm you know, I'm mad as a wife and I'm mad as a business partner now. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so you, you know, you have to watch for stuff like that. And you have to really, really, you know, trust each other. And so all, and, and this is another thing, too. And when you come from a good family, right, all that conflict that folks have, in other cultures, the community supports the marriage. So when I got pissed off, I already know I'm a woman and I get crazy when I'm mad. I know this. Mm-hmm. But I'm a smart mm-hmm. woman, so I don't trust my emotions because I already know my emotions are going to cause me to cuss you out, and that's not something mm-hmm. I want to do or do, normally do. My mm-hmm. emotions are going to cause me to be retaliatory. I ain't cooking for a week since you want to act like that, you know. So <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, myself, right. what can I do? What can I do? I need balance because I am crazy right now because this is unexpected, and it's just pissing me off. And so I said, what mm-hmm. do I do? And I said, I need to balance my energy because I'm an alchemist. How do I balance my energy? I got all this crazy female energy that's emotional. How do I, I need some, I need some logic and some reason. I need some mm-hmm. order here. So I call my dad mm-hmm. and I call his dad. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. I didn't make a move. I didn't mm-hmm. talk. I didn't say anything. I didn't react. I said, let me call his father. His father's responsible for the man he created. Mm-hmm. And he knows mm-hmm. him better than anybody else because he built him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell right, me right. how to deal with your son. <laughs> not a mm-hmm. shaming situation. Mm-hmm. Not shaming. Mm-hmm. But I'm his wife, mm-hmm. and I'm not going nowhere, so I need you to tell me how to pull it on back and get down to reality mm-hmm. and deal with situations. Mm-hmm. His father 
talked to me about pride, gave me a lot of pointers, and he had to redirect me. It took him an hour and a half because I kept saying, but you don't understand. But that's what family's for. Okay. Family is supposed to keep the marriage together. We do the opposite in the black community. We want to go, oh, that's honey, hell fact. no. I know he didn't do that. Oh, tell that nigga mm-hmm. you don't need. You can do bad by yourself, you know. No. Mm-hmm. That's why I ain't calling no women. Mm-hmm. You see that. I ain't calling no <laughs> auntie. I know what they going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I call mm-hmm. father. <laughs> okay. And so okay. I let that soak in. I let my father-in-law, let his words and his wisdom, even some of it I disagree with, I let it just soak on in. I waited a day mm-hmm. later, and I called my father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I asked my, I told my dad everything. I said, now what do I do? You know, how does this work out? My dad told me, you know, he told me everything. He said, that's the man. You let him handle his mess. Mm-hmm. But you need to create transparency. Both of them said the same thing. Create transparency. Now that this has happened, create transparency. Mm-hmm. That's your job now. Create the transparency. So now, it, when it used to be, okay, you handle your properties and you handle, he has, my husband has his own business as well. You handle all mm-hmm. your own stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to lay it all out on the table. Let's see everything. Yeah. Let's see yeah. everything. The the water bill for that house and that house and the light bill for that house and this and that, the deeds and the insurance. Lay it all out. Let's do that. We're going to do that first and the 15th of every month. We have business meetings anyway. This is just another layer so that you and I both know that we are invested wisely with each other. Okay. So even in the context of a marriage and forming a business partnership with your husband, you still maintain, like, business meetings and things of that nature? How does that work? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, because if you don't talk and you don't really – you think about any successful business or any successful partnership in business. To me, marriage is business, and it always has been. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is a modern concept since the, what, the Victorian era, this idea of romantic love. But if you go back in generations, I mean, even if you look at the brown people in the world, you go to Arab countries, Asian countries, um, the Middle Eastern countries, even Latinos, everybody has arranged marriages. They have a marriages that mm-hmm. are put together, even the Jewish community, Africans. Mm-hmm. Their relationships mm-hmm. are put together by family. Mm-hmm. I have a good son. You have a good daughter. She's beautiful. He's nice. Let, you know, they're going to be successful. He's 10 years or however many years older than her. Let them go together and be married. And the families agree. And if they don't agree, then they don't get married. But that is because people have commonalities. They have um, an understanding of life. They have a similar cosmology. They have similar life goals. And so this is really important when you think about even Europeans. It's the poor people in Europe that try that fall in love stuff. It's them. Mm-hmm. But you look at the Trumps. Mm-hmm. You look at even George Bush. You see, you see some of the mm-hmm. Clintons. Them police people do not have the money, the money white people, the Europeans who have power in Europe and in America, they do not marry for love. They marry to solidify their status in society. Hmm. That's true. And so I think that there's a part, yeah, absolutely, and Africans do the same thing. They solidify Hmm. um, deals. That's what marriages are. They're deals and agreements. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially like in Islamic countries, there's a marriage contract. Right. This is like literal contract. The, the Jews have marriage contracts. Um, so many different cultures have marriage contracts. You agree to this and I agree to that. And mm-hmm. people live by that, you know. And so we have to do that. We have to say this relationship has conditions. And this is the part black folks really don't like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This relationship has conditions. One of the conditions is I need you to da da da. We need to say that stuff up front. All these invisible contracts, no good. Oh, good. Why can't we say <laughs> assume, to somebody, I'm assume contract, <laughs> making contracts right, based assume off assumption. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are invisible because don't nobody see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we walk around yeah. mad and we get divorced yeah. on stuff that we ain't even know we were supposed to be doing. We ain't even set it up. So we just had these assumptions that we was hoping that people was going to feed into. And when they don't, it's like, to hell with you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. 
So if we're gonna do a, if we're gonna do conditional relationships, why not talk about those conditions? Because there are most of them are conditions. When you stop looking attractive, I'm done with you. When you get 400 pounds, I'm done with you. When your ass gets oh, broke or disabled or whatever, I'm done. <laughs> When you go bald head, I'm done. You know? <laughs> well, uh, when I find another woman that's more attractive to me than you, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but why, why can't we do that? Let me ask you that. Why can't we do that? Why can't we talk about conditions? What you think? I feel like people get their feelings hurt, you know? And generally, if you're not really doing the self-work and you running from the shadow then everything that I tell you that's not agreeable to you is going is going to sting a little bit. So if I tell you I'm not really into you gaining weight and things like that, you're going to take it personal as opposed to me just feeling like I just don't want to be with no woman that weighs 450. Like, I just don't want to do it. it right. got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? It's just my <laughs> personal preference. So, you know, generally we have to respect each other's preferences and then sometimes people just don't want to do that. They want to take your personal preferences, a personal shot. When it's never that way, you know what I'm saying? It's just Oh, absolutely. We you know, it, it it's just your choice to take how I feel personally, you know, especially in relationships. Um the reason why I think that people aren't able to be honest in relationships is that they have been taught and trained to be dishonest and Mm -hmm. that's the lifestyle that we're trying to maintain but you know as far as consciousness and having these different types of conversations it's important to realize that you cannot live a long prosperous healthy life with skeletons in the closet you know what I'm saying not keeping it real with your partner like not telling her like I'm really not into this or I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? Like generally right. we try to keep shit in and we hold it in and hope hoping that by us holding the shit in it will rectify and correct the situation. But it just keeps getting darker and the shadow keeps getting bigger. And you know we have to be honest, but I don't think that's the culture's way. So generally. You have to have your small pockets of conscious people that can be honest with each other and grow from that because it's not going to be a mass thing. It's not going to be millions of people, like, waking up one day like, oh, I get it now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just You just got to keep speaking your truth and hopefully people will align with it. I mean, honestly, people will align with it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a personal thing within you to say, this is what I want. <laughs> This is my truth, you know what I'm saying? And then that other piece that you talked about, commitment, you know what I'm saying? I feel like in relationships, commitment should be the first goal. And then once you establish Mm -hmm. commitment, then you kind of begin to be honest with each other, begin to talk to each other and grow with each other. But generally, if you don't have that commitment first, then I can say Mm -hmm. some shit tomorrow and you'll be done with my ass. And the things that we worked on, planned with, planned for, and invested in, you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you get far with that? You know what I'm saying? And you ready to cut me off as soon as I trigger some shadow shit within you. So generally, we got to right. establish that commitment first. And that's what I try to do in my relationship, no matter what the case may be. Like, you ain't going nowhere, and I ain't going nowhere. And whatever we experience, we're going to have to just figure the shit out, because... I can just can't see you. I can't see you going nowhere. I can't go. Like you know, what I'm saying it ain't like a prison or anything like that. It's just that we are committed to each other. We're committed to each other's growth. When we when we got together, we didn't have it all. You know what I'm saying? But as we grow together, right? You know, we can't break that up now. So absolutely, I don't absolutely. Know. It's, especially it's once you put children in it. I agree with you. Once you put mm-hmm. children in the mix, mm-hmm. at that point, you already you, you've committed a, you've committed your DNA with their DNA, Mm -hmm. and y'all have created Mm -hmm. a soul, and now it's not about Mm -hmm. you anymore, so you just have Mm -hmm. to really flow, Mm -hmm. you really just have to flow with family at that point, and you know, and and that's the thing, a lot of, uh, I'm not going to come down on baby mamas, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come down on them, because you just don't know all the different hardships that they may have endured um, that caused them not to be able to be in a, I guess you would say, a committed marriage or whatever. Maybe they found out too mm-hmm. late, too fast. I don't know. 
Maybe they didn't think right, through right, the right. partnership they was establishing. But um, to me, I feel <laughs> like a lot of us black women, we have to really, really uh, think real hard, real hard. Because you can have sex all day with all whoever day. you want to have sex with. But mm-hmm. producing a child, combining that's your DNA. That's a whole DNA, other thing. <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> level. That's a whole different alchemy. Because like what you were saying, like I had that. I had that thought right before we got on this call. I was just thinking about, like, my relationship, and I was just like, you know, I'm not, this relationship isn't about me, you know what I'm saying, because I'm a father as well. So I generally have to put my children in the best situation around the best type of people. So, like, if it was up to me, I'd probably be somewhere, like, (laughs) ain't no telling, you know what I'm saying, but... Now that I have these children, I have to have them around people that have some sense, generally. So I can't right. be so selfish to just think about me, 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 me all the time. So I think that that's part of the relationship is how we stuck together because it ain't like my personal belief. Like, it's a mom, dad type of thing. Like, it ain't boyfriend, girlfriend type of thing. <laughs> so, that's mm-hmm. a whole different mode. That's a whole different thing. Like if I'm if I'm beating my kid, if I'm beating my girlfriend or something, my son is gonna see that, and that's gonna impact them. So if I'm love and you know this is how you be around one woman and you know you love your woman, you take care of your woman. That's what they see. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm creating. You understand? So absolutely, just, I have to think about them. I can't just think about myself and. You know, some some people ain't like that. Some people is completely self-centered. And I don't feel like you can generally build with people like that because the self is going to lead you all different types of places. And that's cool, too. But when you're talking about building and committing in relationships, there has to be some reduce of the ego and more or less, like, how can we, you know what I'm saying? The question of we is very, very important. Absolutely. But, yeah. yeah, and, 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 and um, then you think about it, too. Your children are an extension of you. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you, there's a bigger purpose here, too, because they have a life to live. And the question right. is, are we, Mommy and Daddy, are we going to make it easier for those children? Are we going to give right. them the tools that maybe we didn't get? Are, they gonna, mm-hmm. are we going to pass them the knowledge so they don't have to struggle? Are we going right. to be able to, you know, like I would love, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had mm-hmm. this book I was going to write some years back, and I said I ain't going to write this book because I would be, I would be a piece, mm-hmm. you know, I'll be considered a piece of shit in the black community if I write this book. But mm-hmm. the what book I was going to write, and I had did an outline. What'd you say? I said, what is it? I want to hear it now. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it was, I'm, I'm a big W.E.B. Du Bois book, I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. E.B. Du Bois Fan. And one of the things that I realized is that it is reproduct, reproduction and marriage where we, you look at all the issues we that we have in short. the black community, we fall we short fall there. Short that. And that is the mm-hmm. biggest common denominator where we fail is when it comes to our children, our children's quality of life, the conditions under which we have our children, the family mm-hmm. dynamic. Because even mm-hmm. when you got a mother and a father physically there, if they're dysfunctional, the dynamic It don't is matter. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. Mm-hmm. The disorder, the dysfunction, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I said to myself, I said, I know, I'm going to create a program. I'm going to be like Booker T. Washington, W. E. Bois. I'm going to create a program, mm-hmm. at least in my academic mind, because I'm a, I'm a big academic. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have done all this research. How do I extend the talented tense? How do I extend progressive black America? What is next for us? Because we're past the, the, you know, you can't vote and you got to sit in the back of the bus. No, we're past that for the most part. It's an economic issue. And our economic issue really boils down to our lack of family structure and business. But Mm -hmm. before we can do business, as a family, which is all, you look at it, these, these Mexicans, what do they do? They're economically together. They shop with Mexicans. They work together. Brother, brother, mm-hmm. and brother have all their wives and children in one big house. They pay $300,000 yes. for the house, and they all split the groceries and everything else, and they ride the same truck because they work in the same company 
a family business together. Yeah, even like I grew up. Now, why can't we do that? I don't know. I grew up in Boston, and I grew up in Boston, and I've seen that so many times. The Haitian families, the Dominican families, the Vietnamese, they they would all live in one house. Man, yeah. wife, other couples, like, because it was like, all right, you come to this country, you stay at this house till you get your shit together, save your money, and then you branch out. Generally, we don't have that safety net, and and we have to just kind of figure it out on the fly. So generally, if we don't have anybody telling us, well, we need to educate our damn selves because these white people ain't about to teach us a damn thing. So no, they're not. And so, and then the and then the economics and the group economics thing is very important. But then we got to learn to trust each other, and trusting each other yeah. starts with self. So, yeah, just growing up and seeing that, I've always known that, you know, our problem is the fact that we just don't work together. Generally, we'll see black people all day and won't say nothing but what's up or head nod and keep it moving. Generally, we don't have no communication amongst ourselves. So, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But notice that the structures that come with these businesses and these economics, notice their blood. Notice that they're family. Mm -hmm. They don't usually go and pick some random stranger from Mexico. They pick their cousin. They pick somebody who they I'm have sure. enough in common with and enough trust and blood. There's nothing like blood. So it goes back to family structures. How can we build strong families? So with the book I titled was A Moratorium on Black Birth. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, stop having kids. And it wasn't. It wasn't about not mm. having black children because we don't love black children. It was a 10-point right. plan that unless these conditions are met, you are not cut out to, to establish even have children. children. That's right. You're not cut out. Not yet. You ain't ready yet. And so yeah. it was a 10-point plan. And it was basically you how many lives you can save with that book. <laughs> I'm you telling can save you, they would have hated me. They would have hated me. They would have been were, mad. You were self-hating Deprecating black, you know, jigaboo, mm-hmm. uh-huh. sambo. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> they did not want to see uh-huh. that it was coming from Pan Africanism. <laughs> right, right, right. I'd right. be like, poor brother. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? What's the brother? What's his name? Oh. The one who, the, with the school, Marcus Garvey School. Oh, um, Umar Johnson. Umar, yeah, I'd be like the female Umar Johnson. I ain't trying to go oh, down yeah. that road. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. I really keep my don't mouth quiet. I'm going to do my program instead of tell folk about it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. I really wanted to I wanted to um, touch on some polygamy mm. stuff with you. Um, before we really get mm. into that, I, it was a young lady who had a question for you or a list of questions for you, and I really wanted to oh, give sure. her some time to talk to you. Are you okay with that? Oh, absolutely. I'm glad to do it. Hello. Angela, you on? Yeah, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yeah. So so this is Maymuna. Maymuna, this is Angela. Um, she has some questions for you, so it's it's up to y'all. Oh. Go ahead. Excellent. Hi, Maymuna. How, how are you? I'm good. good. I'm good. How are you? All right. Yeah. So, you know, I've been in Chicago. I had a few questions I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, as far as um, you know, your relationship goes as far as the polygamy aspect. Was it you meeting, you know, the the person that you were bringing into your home, or was it your husband meeting them and bringing them into your home, or how did that work uh, out for you? Right. Um, well, the funny thing is a lot of people think that polygamy is something like a, a, a new phenomenon, something strange and and, and exceptional, like you do something really different than you would normally. And the truth of the matter is, um, in, in my case, um, which I think was the best thing, and I think is the best thing for polygamy, is let a man be a man. Um, he has to, of course, have the right character and right agenda. He can't be using polygamy as a chance to be a whore with no real purpose. So not that. But if, if, he's, if that's not the issue and he, he legitimately wants to establish a strong family structure, 
then the best thing, in my opinion, is like what we did, whereas my husband, um, this is, of course, before we had kids, we both would go out and hang out and have fun, go to a hookah bar here, there, whatever. And so the, he would basically treat himself as a single man. You know, a single man can sit at the bar and buy a woman a drink. A single man can sit and have a conversation. Um, <clears throat> he operated very much like a single man. There's not a, none of that, oh, I can't talk to you until my wife is present. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like that. That one thing I can say, which is maybe the tricky part, is early on the brother has to, like within the same day, he has to acknowledge that he has a wife. Because if he doesn't, mm-hmm. he's dishonoring the sister that's single. He's choosing to not give her the opportunity to decide whether she wants to be bothered with a unique situation or not. So the honesty up front to me, that's where you eat. And it's good, though, because if she said, oh, honey, no, I don't, I don't fool with married men, mm-hmm. then you know she's mm-hmm. not that person. But my, my husband would say, for example, Oh, yeah, something, 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 you know, and they might exchange phone numbers, and he'll say something like, yeah, when I get home to my wife. He would find some way to say something about my wife. And, of course, you know, the conversation could probably possibly say, um, go to, you getting divorced or, or you some kind of whore or whatever. And then when she says that, that means she has a concern. Well, my wife is, is um, me, we are polygamists. Or we're open to experimental relationships. Or I'm honest with my wife. Or my wife mm-hmm. knows that I, you know, may meet women to bring into my family. And a lot, I mean, you'd be amazed. Because there's so many sisters out here, they try to hold their nose up in the air and stuff. But they mm-hmm. date married men, and the wife don't know nothing about it. So there's a lot of sisters that have dated married men. So they can't act like it's such a big stretch. Now, I understand and respect when a sister don't, want to be bothered. I want my own man and be the queen of my castle. I get that and I respect that, but you would be surprised how many women are intrigued. I mean, completely and totally intrigued. Because at that point, they're like, damn, you must be the shit. Your wife is really open and she ain't worried about you, not to keep you or struggle to lose you. Who the hell is you? Mm -hmm. You A lot of women are turned the fuck on. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, I'll be honest with you, my husband was a very successful polygamist, very successful. And I have to say this, too. You do not drag every woman home, literally. There's a long process. I'm aware of her day one. I'm aware of every bit of the process, the progress, anything that happens. They go on a, they go on a date, they go out for donuts or go for a walk in the park. I know already. There's nothing that she could tell me about him and what they're doing I don't know already. That's the openness. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I don't need to meet her for a long time, and he understands that. He's the gatekeeper. She has to meet certain qualifications for him, and then she also has to meet certain qualifications for me. But he already knows mm-hmm. what I am open to and what I'm not open to. So I trust him, and that's the thing. Do you trust your man? Do you trust him to not just go and say they went on a date, but they went to the hotel, and he just wham, bam, thank you, man, with a bunch of women? Is he that? Does he have that character? Is he a man whore? Is he really trying to establish family? Is he looking for the qualities? Have y'all discussed that? What qualities does this sister need to have? In terms of business, what can she bring to the table? See, my ex co wife, the, the, bad, the bitch was bad. I'm serious. She, mm-hmm. you know, had an MBA. Mm-hmm. She, she is making, you know, way more than me. She brought mm-hmm. a lot to the table. She was corporate mm-hmm. and good at her stuff. She was an accountant. You know, she was bad. And so she met my qualifications. I don't mess with scraps. And so a lot of people get excited about polygamy, and they take these old beat down, broke up, you know, <laughs> toe down sisters because that's all that's open. They're looking for somewhere to live. I don't go for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She got to meet me at my equal or better because I don't need her. Mm-hmm. What do I need her for? How did y'all handle, like, you know, you said with your ex, uh, Cole wife, how did you guys handle disagreements, you know, between the three of you or if you had a disagreement with her or versus vice versa, she had one with your husband, how was that handled? Ooh, was it handled that's as a group? A tricky stuff. Ooh, that's a <laughs> tricky stuff. Yes, yeah, he... He, he was very worn out emotionally because he had to play referee. And this is something mm-hmm. that I would do differently from the beginning if I could. 
Because sometimes we get into polygamy, we say, oh, this is going to be happy-go-lucky, and we're going to communicate, and we're sisters, and we're conscious. That's bullshit. Um, you are women, and there's going to come a point where she's going to do something and say something a certain way and do something to get on your nerves. And then you know how we do as black women. We start side looking at each other like, oh, I know what that really means. We, we do. <laughs> and we start dragging out issues and stuff. And if we don't go ahead and box it out, so me and her had to learn. We had to learn to look at each other in the face. You getting on my nerves and I'm getting on your nerves, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Just confront mm-hmm. it straight out. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to play old speak sister, none of that stuff. Okay, so mm-hmm. one of the things that we did, we first started out having conflict and like, okay, we're going to have clarity. So we pull him to the side and we'd be like, okay, this is what's going on. She said this and I said that. And we tried to be as objective as we could, but before it was over, we'd be emotional. The reason why we had him involved was so that he could bring it down, bring it all down and keep, you know, referee. And we realized this was not good for him. Because then he's dealing with, well, how does that affect the dynamic between me and her? Now, what if I take her mm-hmm. side? Now, how is that going to affect the dynamic? And mm-hmm. the one time that I felt like, oh, that's my husband and he took her side, oh, I went off. I went crazy. I wasn't prepared. Mm-hmm. That's her husband, too. Just because I was here first doesn't mean I'm always going to be right. So I had to really deal with that. That first wife, second wife dynamic, you have to kill that. You are equals. And a lot of women ain't going to do that. They're not going to do it. They'll pull that card real quick. But you can leave because this is my house. You mm-hmm. can't do that. We talked about, brother, commitment. You committed to her. Yeah. Committed you to know, both. You know, committed to working it out. Um, so mm-hmm. one of the things I can tell you, we realized, we, we would, and she's a very smart woman, so we would sit and talk about, we would analyze our arguments. We would sit there and say, well, I see where I went wrong, and we take responsibility. I said this, and this is what went took the conversation left. Oh, well, I didn't realize that you said that, and that's how come I said So we had to break stuff down after we're not mad anymore. So we started doing that. And we also had what you call Sister, um, sister Wife Sundays. I know that sounds cheesy, but mm-hmm. I don't have no room for romance for no woman in my life. So I had to say, how do we accept sisterhood? Because... If we are sisters, we need to really connect just me and her. It can't be that he's the glue to everything. So we I wouldn't call it dates. It was just an outing. We would go and pick restaurants, and we would just sit and talk and just be friends. Mm-hmm. And it had nothing to do with him. It was just us being two women who understand we have a common goal. And we just talk and shop and do all kinds of different stuff. And anyway, but the one thing that I did realize, and I wish I could have changed that, is when you have conflict, do not bring him into the middle of it. Don't make him the referee. It's draining for him. Most men think most of the shit that we argue about is stupid, and they don't care anyway. And it just, it's just a waste of energy. It just turns into more drama, you know? So what we started doing, which is the most, I think, brilliant thing, I think I saw this for some kind of re- relationship or marriage website I went on, and they were saying that, like 90% of the stuff that you are frustrated and mad about that you act out and you say stuff about don't even need to be said. Hmm. And I thought about it and I said, okay, so how do we handle that? Because a lot of it is petty. And if I had to wait, how, how, much, how much would this matter if I waited for three days? Right? Holy. So we created a, a conflict jar, a literal jar. I have a video about it. And we put the jar in the kitchen in a common area, and if she did something I didn't like or said something I didn't like, I would just go write it down. I would just mm-hmm. write everything. I don't know why you said so-and-so, because that was just stupid. And what you really meant was, and I, I'm feeling something, and I would just write it all out, fold it up, put it in the jar. And the agreement was you don't touch the jar until, you know, we said like once a month. Mm-hmm. And so... By the point, maybe four days go by, I go back into the jar and pull out the little shit I wrote because it went about now. <laughs> and I throw it in the trash. Mm-hmm. 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 So we only mm-hmm. had like one or two things in the jar. And most of the things in the jar were not emotionally driven. They were more like, um, I would prefer if you just let me cook what I want to cook and you don't try to monitor, you know, something like a pr- procedural. You don't realize you're mm-hmm. doing stuff. Like a woman don't necessarily mm-hmm. want you coming over her shoulder. Now, what you put in there? Now, he don't eat that. I know you're the first wife, but I don't need you to teach me him. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. 
procedure. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel less than when you come behind me to tell me what he eat and don't eat. Let me learn my own man. So it's procedural mm-hmm. stuff that ended up in the jar, not petty, emotional, stupid stuff. Because she and I both would just and take can, the stuff and throw it in the trash. And can I ask and a question? Every time you look in the jar, uh, it'd be 10 or 15 things. <laughs> how did y'all handle or how did you handle another woman or women finding your husband attractive or wanting him? Like, how do you process that? Because in some cases, it could be like, you know, you really don't care if you allow your significant other to date other people. Like, how do you process that? Well, one of the things, I I have a, a little bit of a unique situation. I am a natural polygamist. Mm-hmm. I've always been a polygamist. I see the, the, the I'm, I'm a Pan-Africanist, and I see that people mm-hmm. of color have always had polygamy. So I accept the polygamy as desirable. A lot of women are being mm-hmm. talked into polygamy. They're settling mm-hmm. for polygamy. I don't think it's good okay. for those women, honestly. Um, if a woman can't come to polygamy and see how she's coming up and how she's benefiting, oh, man, that's a bad sister. She can help. She, she's somebody I want help in raising these kids. She's somebody, I love mm-hmm. the way she cleans and cooks. I want her beside me. We're going to tear this up. It needs to be a team dynamic. And if we come into polygamy with a team dynamic, with a, I see how you benefit me, sister, and you can benefit me, and I can benefit you, and we can work this out. And between the three of us or the four of us, oh, this is going to be off the chain. If you come to it with a positive attitude and the mm-hmm. right reasons and you have duty and purpose in your mind, it can really work out. And that word that, you know, Brother L said, Commitment, commitment, commitment. I'm mm-hmm. committed to everybody's well-being in this situation. We cannot compete against each other. So that competition energy has to not be there. And if you can't kill it, I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to be dead, but if you can't kill mm-hmm. it for the most part, polygamy ain't going to work out. So I did never have, um, uh, oh, my God, she looks better than me, or he looked like he holding her hand more. You can't sit mm-hmm. and measure you got to stop measuring. And we're born into a society that's mm-hmm. always telling us, that's the first thing you learn. This is mine and that's yours. Mm-hmm. And if you try to take mm-hmm. your mind and try to do this to me, then I'm going to retaliate, you know? Did your husband have a different relationship with your co-wife than he, what he had with you? Like, was the relationship different or how was it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, how was it with him yeah. and your co-wife versus you? Absolutely. I mean, that's just one of those things. Um, you, you, you're always going to have a different relationship, and sameness is not the goal. And that's the conflict I've always had. I've had three different polygynous polyg- relationships. Um, mm-hmm. The last one was the live-in. We went further with the last one. Um, and that was the ultimate conflict was because she could not stop measuring if you decide you want to measure everything, whether you're the first wife or the second wife, it can be equally as, as painful. And that's mm-hmm. where the man being the shit comes in. A man who is a true polygamist, he can actually make both women feel like, honey, you the shit, you this, you that. And neither one of them has to wonder. It's, it's, you know, the, for example, the first wife, she sees this new either younger or sexier or whatever, more in shape, whatever sister come in. And her age may be causing her, is he trying to get rid of me? You know, the insecurity creeps in if you're not Mm -hmm. careful. You have to Mm -hmm. be strong in who you are. Mm -hmm. Oh, she got longer hair than me. She must be, you know, this or that. Or, you know, even the sexual part, she must be fucking the hell out of him. And she probably is because she's new to him. This is old dick to you, okay? Mm -hmm. So she probably is, and that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and one of the things that I did, <laughs> I, I, had, I did, I ain't gonna lie, I had some sexual insecurities a little bit because I'm old. I've been with him for a long time. And so, of course, all I do is I'd be like, can I come? <laughs> can I come see? They're like, yeah, come on. And so I'm sitting on, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm sitting on the side of the bed just looking. Not a creepy Ooh. look, just like a, oh, wow, oh, my. You know, I don't get nasty with it, but she used to suck the hell out of his dick. And I just be like, damn, I need to get on my job. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't do it like I used to. So okay, it has that sure. dynamic. So it can be sexy. It can be sexy. It can be 
one of those things where you say, oh, wow, this put a new spark in the relationship. Or even sometimes if they're having sex, the door closed and you hear it, you're like, oh, it, I ain't going to say you compete, but you definitely take your game up a little bit, you know. <laughs> I can say when she was around, I was a better woman. I cooked more. I folded mm-hmm. clothes, which I had never done before. I went above and beyond. I ain't going to lie. And it wasn't competing. Mm-hmm. It was just like I saw her folding clothes, and I said, dang, I never thought about folding clothes. So I would sit beside and help her fold his clothes, you know. Mm-hmm. So it can mm-hmm. if you if you take that energy and make it constructive, don't compete. Figure out how she can respond to you and make you a better woman. And she can make you think of things to do or qualities or things you want to build in yourself. She should be inspiration. She's not competition. I should. I should. Wow. So yeah, that, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? My thought Angela. my thoughts on that like I mean, I this is all it's all new to me too, you know what I'm saying? I, I am naturally I'm a jealous person. Naturally. So I know that jealousy is something that, you know, that I would have to that I would have to make sure that I work on, you know what I'm saying, that I would get over. But I'm like I'm when it comes down to other things, like I'm totally like open minded. You know, and I look. Mm-hmm. I want to build. That's what I want to do. My my goal is to eventually, like, I want to homeschool my son and other kids. Like, yeah. that's what eventually I want to do. That's my biggest focus is a family build. You know, some people yeah. are looking like, oh, I want to build a business with you. I want to do this. I'm not. I want a family build. That's what I want. You know, I mean, I work hard and everything. You know, and I, I um, I work hard. I say, like, I've learned things, even when you were talking about earlier about that generational wealth, you know what I'm saying? It's things that I've learned since I've been, I, the first time I got a job making good money, I blew through, like, almost $70,000 in a year because oh, I didn't wow. know what it was to have money. I didn't know what it was to save I didn't know what it was. All I know is that, like, oh, I got this job, I got got money now, so I can do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So I have to go back and figure out, like, okay, Angela, you need to save money. You need to have money set to a side. I open up my son's savings account. My son has savings account. My son has stocks in his name. Like, you know what I'm saying, that I'm the um, guardian over. You know what I'm saying? So I learned. I I had to figure this all out on myself. You know, so my when it comes down to building and everything, I'm looking. That's what it is. I just want a family build, and I want to be able to teach want my son to see that you don't have to go to work and work hard. I come from my mm-hmm. mom. She's never had a job. She's always been a hustler. Like that hustling that you were speaking about. Like she's always hustled. She's never had to clock in before. You know. And oh so wow. That's just something I. <laughs> You don't want to teach my son, like, you can create what you want. You know, we can have that generation. I'm going to set something up for you, you know, so when you turn 18, yeah. so you already have money in the bank. You know what I'm saying? I'm That's something, I don't know, that's just what I'm looking um, to do. But, wow. I like the way you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let me ask you this. Okay, so we're having this conversation about polygamy, and you sound to me like you are a single woman with a child. Is that the case? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in your situation, I'm just curious, because I'm always trying to understand how black women see things. What is the part that makes you open to polygamy as a single woman? Well, because I, I do see the aspect in, like I said, in building. I have... I know, like, I'm just, I don't need anybody to focus on just Angela. I don't, I don't know, like, I, I don't need anybody to focus on just me. Like, I, I want to be able to, um, you know, be able to do, I don't even want to <laughs> <laughs> I want to no, be able I, I to. I know what you're saying because what I, I hear you saying is you want to allow yourself a certain amount of freedom within the space of commitment. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what I and that's what I want. And I do also want I do want that build that family build. Like I want other kids. I want more kids. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm willing to take uh, somebody who else who has kids. 
And I just want, you know, just that, that, that sister bond, that girl that I can talk to, that friend bond, like, you know, to be with me. Like, that's what I'm really, that's just what I want. Um, okay. So I see what you're saying. So you, you feel that there's a, there's a balance somewhere between having your man as well as having a sister, a sisterhood, correct. and motherhood and familyhood. Yes. Yeah, and that's I mean, important. It is, and, and you know, and that's what uh, brother Ellen and I was talking about. I I'm a polygamist because it's practical. I can't be everything. Mm. These black women out here killing themselves, trying to be <laughs> this, trying to be that. Trying. I'm not ready to kill myself. I can't do it all. I'm gonna tell you. I hold my hands up. I can't do it all. I do a lot, but I can't do it all. And sure. I really do and that's what happens with I, me. That's what happens with me. I work nine hours a day. I come home. I have homework. I have to do with my son. I have, you know, I have to make sure he eats. I still have the extra activities that he he asks me to do with him that I have to do with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just so much that I have to do on top of me. You know, I help my mom with her business. So that's really like two jobs that I have. Like it's really a lot of things that I do that it, it would benefit me. You know, oh, um, absolutely. even even with my with my my son's my son's uh, father, he has other kids, and I even like started talking to his other to the other moms like, come on, we got to come together <laughs> yeah. and help each other out because there's, there's no beefing, no feeling, you know what I'm saying, no feeling some kind of way. Like we got to come together and help each other out, and we got a thing, we got a little system going now to where like every other weekend we're alternating who babysits the kids. And, you know, that's working out good. That's working out good with us. And even to the fact that my son's, um, my son's wife, my son's dad, his his dad's wife was like, me and her, we didn't talk at all. And now they kept him last week for, well, a couple of weeks ago for like five days straight. It's like, oh, he's fine. We're going to keep him at the house. Like, you know, so it's like, it's things like that. I see how it can benefit, how it can work, you know, when everybody has an understanding. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. That you see, but, but what it is? What are y'all? What are y'all doing? Y'all are creating family bonds. Y'all are creating community, and y'all have a cooperative kind of relationship. You know, mm-hmm. and you can you can, you can't lose when you can have that. the more support we have from extended family, from polyg- polygynous families, or you know, creative families dynamics. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't go wrong when you got that kind of support. So we, and I think we do. We we are living in a different age and a different time, and we're gonna have to make some adjustments. We really are gonna have to, whether we like it or not. And so that's empowering what you're saying that you know all these women usually, oh well, well I'm his first baby mama, or I'm this, I'm that, I'm the new wife. People get, get over yourself. You need mm-hmm. child care, and I need child care. Mm-hmm. Right. And on top of that, you know, I'm paying almost. I pay almost thirty five hundred dollars a month in bills by the loan <laughs> by myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just like it's like I need it's just like it's it would just be beneficial for me. I can cut back. You know what I'm saying? On some things and it it would just be it's so beneficial. Um I yes. That's no, true. I get I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> if you think about if you think about this, say for example, this this is one of my dynamics. If you have a brother that's hardworking, whatever he does, or he does business on the side, you have one wife that can, that maybe she's a homemaker, and she's the, I can, you know, she's the healer of the family. She cooks, and she enjoys that. She keeps the house up, and she homeschools and takes care of the children, does gardening and all that type of stuff, and that's what she loves to do. And she stands in her greatness and good at what she does. And then you have this other sister that is the one who's like, you know, career climbing. That sister wants kids too. That sister wants her kids to be homeschooled. She wants the same thing. She just can't she can't prioritize no. that. Mhm. She she likes corporate America. She likes getting on that hamster wheel. It's real. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the dynamic mm-hmm. between me and my ex co wife. Oh, she is a she's a grinder. She is ugly with it, you know. She likes that money. Mm-hmm. She can make it and throw it at all but that, that's love, <laughs> but that's so that's point for me. <laughs> What's that? That's how I am. I like my money. I like getting my money. Like you know what I'm saying. I like. I'm a go getter. You know, my job yeah. is commission based, so I gotta go. I gotta go get it. And that's that's just how I am. I like having my own. 
you know, and that's what I was going to ask you. How did you, how do you feel about, did your co-wife have to live with you or how did, did she have her own house or how does that go? Okay. Well, let's look at your situation. You said you pay $3,500 a month in bills. Mm -hmm. The brother is going to have his income, but how much can he really split? Because if she wants her own house and you got your own spot, I mean, are mm-hmm. we gonna, who are we going to put that on? Who's paying for what if you start having different households? Now, if a brother is wealthy, 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 and he got unlimited income, then maybe, you know, if in the Holyfield, for example, he got like four different houses with all his baby mamas on the same land. He bought them all cash. Mm-hmm. You know, so these wealthy brothers can do that. They can keep mistresses or women or whatever as many as they want because they can provide. But that's not really realistic for African-American men in this day and age. That that right. brother can take thirty five hundred dollars and pay your bills and take thirty five. Can we really put that on a brother? Like heck, I can't as a woman see myself paying for two households. I make good money, but I don't really see that. That's not feasible. Now, what I can say is that one of the things I had looked at because I knew that long term, which is what I saw the uh, some of the polygamists do, they custom build houses that are connected. Mm. So when you, you got your money right, that's a better option. You buy a piece of land, you build mm-hmm. a house, or you can reconstruct a house so that each woman can have her own space within the same household. The main thing is you got one mortgage. That's what you want to focus on. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I'm saying? One source, one pool, like we just talked about, the Mexican folks. Yeah. They could all break off yeah. and have uh, $2,000 mortgages. Eight people got 2000 Two, you know what I'm saying? That's sixteen thousand dollars. But imagine if you said, "Okay, we're going to build a ten thousand dollar a month house." You talking about a mansion, right? So together, I feel like we can do more. So that's my dynamic. Now, if you you, know, you end up with a rich, wealthy man, and he want to do that, that's cool. <laughs> but for the average brother, you know, the same yeah. household with same mortgage is, is 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 it benefits everybody. And how's that sister going homeschool? If she don't have an income, you see what I'm saying? Right. So then the question is, uh, is the man and the woman going to pay for her household? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So are you going to pay? You know what I'm saying? That, 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 there's that question. So to me, and I also like the same household because I need to share duties. I don't need my own kitchen. I don't need my own everything to clean up because I'm still cleaning it by myself. I need her to come in mm-hmm. into the kitchen that we have and clean. I need her to come into the kitchen that we have and cook for all of us, not for her family. Mm. But if polygamy is for the man, which is like a lot of Muslims do, polygamy polygyny is done for the man and the man alone. Yes, a lot of times they'll have a wife in this apartment and they'll have another wife in that apartment. Them two sisters don't talk, don't care for each other, and mm-hmm. don't have to. Mm-hmm. But she's still yeah, in her own house by herself. She's still cleaning by herself. She's still raising her own mm-hmm. kids by herself. She's still with the same struggle as a single woman. I wouldn't single have single mom. Her. What do I need her for? Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. And the husband somewhere gone, ninety percent of the right. time. Because if he ain't, if he ain't with his other wife, he's handling business. So you just signed up to be a single mom, <laughs> for real. Ooh, like, you know that's what I'm it. saying? <laughs> And then the kids don't even yeah. see daddy every night. He's over there at all. Two days. They don't even oh. know him. Yeah. Yeah, right. they don't even know him. They just have an image yeah. of him and, you know, and they, in the good that the mom, like, speaks good of him and things of that nature. Like, he ain't a deadbeat dad, but at the same time, you know, the polygamy relationship is solely for him and the women have no benefit to it. So two households is for the man. One household is for the whole collective and Mainly yeah. for the women. Yeah. 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 I, I ain't gonna but lie. We are... it, 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 <laughs> it takes a lot of stress off, even sexually. It takes a lot of. Oh, it takes a lot of stress off. And I know that sounds bad because we're supposed to be this sex goddess, and I just. It, it takes a lot of stress off. It takes a lot of stress because sometimes you don't have. You got stuff going on. You got children. You got this. You got that. And sometimes you just tired and. It it, it it takes the stress off of your, your sexual whatever, and then when you do have sex, it, it means something, especially if you've been married for a while. Um, mm-hmm. and you know there's some other dynamic in the relationship. 
the sexual relationship definitely changes for the first wife. You know, in a lot of good ways, it, it changes in a lot of good ways, and so that part is not bad. But one thing I can say, as a first, as a second wife, I would never go into something hoping to be in love with mm-hmm. the, the guy. You know what I mean? Mhm. Mhm. I definitely um, understand. That. Yeah, I wouldn't go in trying to be in love because then there's that that part about competition. Then there's that part about well, he's not treating me, and how do I catch up with her 10 years, or how do I catch up with her five years she's already been? So that measuring stuff mm-hmm. comes into play when your goal is to is to make sure that he's in love with you like he's in love with her. I would prefer myself, if I was a second wife, to be a part of a family that knows polygamy is a duty and a function and a commitment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, where that is out there in the forefront. It ain't two people trying to be in love with the same man. I don't I don't see that turning out well myself. Mm. Yeah. Man, like we went through a lot of information and a lot of it, you know, kind of works together uh based on the polygamy point cuz generally if you don't have your money together, fellas, like just cancel the whole idea of polygamy out. Like don't even think about it till you got your shit together. And I think generally for women too, some sense of self, some sense of identity is necessary for you to even mention the word polygamy because generally you got to have something to bring to the table if you want to have a successful relationship. And uh, we just uh, winded down. We're running out of time. And I just really wanted to thank Maymuna. Thank you, Angela, for adding to the conversation. You really, you Absolutely. know what I'm saying, ex- expanded it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, this ain't going to be the last time we talk. You know, this wasn't the first time we talked. So generally, I just like to continue the conversation because the information shared here is, like, very powerful and eye-opening. So if you didn't hear the message from the beginning, it'd be nice for you to rewind it and really with a pen in the pad and you got some free time, just take notes on what the sister was saying, um, just about home-based businesses and the importance of it. Because generally, you might think you got it all figured out, you know, working and doing that but she said earlier they only give you enough money so you can keep coming back you understand and when we trying to build successful generational wealth we ain't gonna find it under the white man and that's just the reality and so you know what I'm saying we have to figure out a way to come together and work together and so the business piece and the polygamy piece it can work together but generally we have to be real with ourselves and have a strong sense of self before we can even begin to relate to one another. And so once again, I just want to thank you, Maymuna. Um, did you have anything to, um, if people wanted to get in contact with you, how would they do that? Uh, through the Conscious Cove. Join Conscious Cove um, Facebook say. page. Absolutely. And I enjoyed it. Thank you I so say. much. I say thank you, Maymuna, for your time and your energy. Angela, thank you as well for listening and, you know, expanding the conversation. Thank you. I enjoy it. All right, All right man. For everybody else, man, y'all have a wonderful evening, and we signing out, man. See y'all next time in the Conscious Call. Oh, peace.